Now, a buffer solution is actually not very uh, difficult to understand. We just need to run through a few concepts. By definition, usually we will define a buffer in terms of its function. Typically, we will define a buffer in this way. We will say that, okay, a buffer, it is a solution that can resist changes to pH when you add small amounts of H plus or OH minus. So typically, that's the way we define a buffer, resist changes to pH or maintains pH when you add small amounts of H plus or OH minus. But this definition, uh, personally, I don't really like this definition. Why is it the case? Is because it tells me what the buffer does. It tells me the function of the buffer, but it doesn't tell me what is inside this buffer. It doesn't tell me the ingredients of the buffer, what makes up this buffer. So uh, what we have to do is we have to dig in a bit deeper because we have to understand what is going on that is inside this thing. What is inside this buffer solution that makes it resist changes to pH. So we want to be able to do that. Now, if you think about this, uh, uh, if I have a solution that can resist changes to pH, when you add small amount of H plus or OH minus, when you add H plus to a solution, you tend to make the solution acidic, right? You tend to make the pH decrease. So therefore, if this solution can maintain pH, it means that it must be able to remove the H plus. So it tells me that inside this solution, I must have a base that can remove the H plus. When you add a H plus, the base will remove the H plus. So therefore, it will maintain pH. So a base must be present inside this buffer solution, correct? Now, similarly, if you add OH minus, you cause the pH of the solution to go up, correct? You make the solution more alkaline. So if this buffer solution can maintain pH, when you add this OH minus, this must mean inside this buffer, there's an acid. Oil. And the function of this acid is to remove OH minus. So when you add the OH minus, the acid will remove the OH minus. So therefore, you will maintain the pH. So therefore, a solution that can maintain pH when you're adding H plus and OH minus, it just means that it is a mixture of an acid and base. And the job of the acid is to remove OH minus, and the job of the base is to remove H plus. So a buffer is just a mixture of acid plus base. Then makes makes it a lot clearer. We know what is inside this buffer. It is just an acid and base. It's something interesting is if it is an acid and base, why don't this acid and base they try to kill each other? Because usually acid base they will undergo acid base reaction with each other. Why wouldn't this acid and base try to kill each other? It's because this mixture of acid and base, it is a special mixture. It is a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair. For example, CH3COOH and CH3COO minus. Example, NH3 and NH4 plus. And the reason why they can coexist with each other is because when the acid undergo acid base reaction, it will become the conjugate partner. And when the base undergoes acid base reaction, it will become the conjugate partner. So you always become a conversion. Huh? When I undergo acid base reaction, I'll become you. When you undergo acid base reaction, they will become me. So therefore, this acid and base can coexist with each other and they will not react with each other or, or, or they will not be able to annihilate or kill each other. All right. So now we know that a buffer is nothing more than a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair. It is still acid plus base, but this acid and base, they're related to each other. They are a couple, they are a conjugate acid base pair. I think it's good to keep this in mind eh? rather than just remembering the function of the buffer, the formal definition of the buffer. Remember, it only tells me what it does. It never tells me what is inside this buffer. So it's good to know explicitly buffer is a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair, acid plus base. The job of the acid is to QOH minus. The job of the base is to QH plus. Each one only need to do one thing. Eh? One guy settle H plus, one guy settle OH minus. So very simple. And typically, when we consider buffer, we will say that, okay, there are two buffers, acidic buffer, alkaline buffer. Personally, I do not like that. I like to merge them together, but let us talk about it. Then we will bring the concept together. So acidic buffer, it is a mixture of a weak acid and conjugate base. You notice, uh, typically, we will say that this is the salt of conjugate base, but please don't emphasize on salt. Focus on conjugate base. The conjugate base is more important. All right. Don't get distracted by salt. You notice I'm only highlighting conjugate base. If I have a weak acid and conjugate base, this is an acidic buffer. And then similarly, if I consider alkaline buffer, it is a mixture of a base, weak base and conjugate acid. The salt is not so important. The conjugate acid, it is more important. So why do we say the conjugate acid and conjugate base is important? Because if I consider example, 
involving acidic buffer, CH3COH and salt of conjugate base, CH3COO minus Na plus. If I look at the salt, which will include CH3COO minus Na plus, which one is the one that is giving the buffer its property in terms of maintaining pH? It has nothing to do with Na plus because Na plus is neutral. The component uh, that is making a buffer maintain pH is the CH3COO minus. It is not the Na plus. So therefore, if I focus on conjugate base, I don't get so distracted by the salt, then we are seeing the buffer solution a lot clearer. It's not so much of the salt, but rather the conjugate base. Or it is not so much of CH3COO minus Na plus, it is CH3COO minus. The Na plus is not important. Huh? So the focus huh, is the conjugate base. Similarly, for my alkaline buffer, NH3, NH4 plus Cl minus, my ammonium chloride, the chloride is neutral, ma. chloride is not important. The ammonium, the NH4 plus, is the component that makes the buffer do its buffering thing, maintaining pH. Nothing to do with Cl minus. So don't focus on salt, focus on conjugate acid. Okay? And you notice, uh, regardless of whether this is an acidic buffer or this is an alkaline buffer, they essentially do the same thing. Inside my acidic buffer, I have an acid and base. The acid will be CH3COH. The base will be CH3CO minus, the conjugate base. And the job of the acid is always to remove the OH minus. And the job of the base is always to remove a H plus. So my acidic buffer is nothing more than a conjugate acid base pair. Right? I have an acid and a conjugate partner. Now, if I consider alkaline buffer, you notice uh, what is inside this alkaline buffer is essentially the same. I have an acid and I have a base. The job of the acid is to remove OH minus and the job of the base is to remove H plus. So who is the acid? NH4 plus is the acid, NH3 is the base. So in terms of the components inside my acidic buffer and the components inside my alkaline buffer, it is essentially the same thing. It will still be my conjugate acid base pack. So eventually we want to merge this idea together. I don't really like to consider this as an acidic buffer versus alkaline buffer and we treat them independent of each other because Acidic buffer and alkaline buffer is just nothing more than a mixture of a conjugate acid base pair. As long as I have a conjugate acid base pair, this guy technically I can consider this as a buffer. Then later I can use the buffer equation to calculate the pH of this buffer solution. So the real difference or the only difference between my acidic buffer and alkaline buffer is the buffering range. That means my acidic buffer can maintain pH in the acidic region, pH less than 7. My alkaline buffer can maintain pH in the alkaline region, uh, pH above 7. So that's the only difference, uh, the buffering pH. But how they function in terms of the concept, in terms of the calculation and the formula, actually, it, it will turn out to be exactly the same. So do keep this in mind. Uh, so don't treat them as separate, lump them together. It will just be a conjugate acid-base pair.